You could solve a question like this using Desmos, making a, a regression, but I do not want to do that here because I think it's very, very important that you understand conceptually how to do this because I've seen even harder questions that are based on the same principle, but where Desmos is basically impossible. So we need to understand what's happening here. So it starts out normally, right? Plug points into equations, right? Our main math strategy. What do we have? We have a point. We have an equation. Plug it in. So zero is a kind of like our Y. So that goes in for the G of X. And then 24 is the X. So let's just, let's just follow instructions here. 24 plus 14 times T minus 24, right? So we can simplify if we want. Out of habit, you might just say, okay, 24 plus 14, that's 38. And then uh, T minus 24 goes here. And from there, you could foil it out and solve for T. Totally fine. Or distribute it out and solve for T. But the, the key piece that I, I really think everyone needs to get is the whole reason we love zero, okay? We love it. We love zero in math. It has very special properties. And when you factor equations, the reason you factor is because of those special properties of zero. That's why with quadratic equations, we need to get them equal to zero before we can really do anything with them. So they've already done all that for us here. So we need to recognize that they have given us a gift Making this equal to zero is what makes this question solvable in a few seconds. Because rather than, than foiling everything out, we can look at this and say, okay, the reason zero is so important is that each of these factors is its own little world, its own little equation. And because if one of those worlds, one of those factors is equal to zero, then the whole equation is equal to zero, we can treat them as individuals. And the reason for that is remember, anything times zero is equal to zero. So if the first part were zero, then it would knock out the end part. And so we wouldn't even care what happens in the second piece. But we can see from the numbers that we plugged in that the first part isn't equal to zero. It's equal to 38. So yes, like I said, we could distribute it in and solve for t, but instead we could just look at this piece here and say, okay, in order for this whole thing to be equal to zero, t minus 24 has to be zero here because there's no way for the 38 to be zero. 38 is 38. So this lets us have a simple, kind of more understandable equation, and we could solve for t now, or you can just kind of recognize that it has to be 24, right? 24 minus 24 is what gives us zero. So now we have the full equation. And so the rest of this is, again, just plugging points into equations. We have a different point, but it's the same strategy. So that zero thing, I really want to stress it, that will come up. So if you ever see an equation, especially if it's got like pieces that are being multiplied together, and it's equal to zero, you're probably going to need to think about each piece separately and how what would cause that piece to be equal to zero. And then that might tell you something about the whole equation. So the, this zero property is very, very important. But let's finish the job here. So now we have g of zero. And our equation we now know is x plus 14. So I'll just write the whole thing out. x plus 14. And we know t. t is 24 minus x. Now I'm going to plug the zero in for my x's. So g of zero is equal to zero plus 14 times 24 minus zero. And here's another good thing about zero is it makes arithmetic really easy, right? This is 14 times 24. And now it's just put in your calculator, right? I'm not even going to use Desmos. So 14 times 24 is 336. So that's the answer. And again, you could use Desmos, you could have done the regression line. I do that in all sorts of other videos, I'm not gonna do it here, but I do wanna stress that if that's the only way you were getting this, then you are probably gonna have trouble on other hard questions on your SAT, especially in that hard module, because you're not understanding what the theory of math is. And it can be frustrating, but we need to know certain theory ideas and the properties of zero are one of the big ones.